Hello fellow YouTubers. Um, I'm going to be explaining why the lens's law is the overunity killer. Um, okay, so well, what we want <clears throat> what we want, of course, is to have this thing in resonance. And the resonance plays a large part in the operation of creating a large output for a small input. That's the whole goal, is to have this thing spinning up. Of course, if you started this up uh, from a dead standstill, it's going to use a lot of power, okay, from the power source. It's just, that's just a given. That's what it's going to do. And it's barely going to be spinning, and you're barely going to be putting any output out. And so it's almost a pointless thing. But, you know, we could include the power used to start it up, but I guarantee you that's going to be under unity. <clears throat> okay, and it'll be under unity for a while until all the energy from the battery is stored in the rotor or your flywheel whatever you want to call it. Um, and at that point, we're using the smallest amount of power. Uh, I might have to like just make a video showing this using a meter uh, in between the battery and the, and the motor so you can see that it starts out with a large amount of input. But as this starts spinning up and storing the energy, the power goes down, way down, and the output goes way up. And the whole idea is to get that power out without slowing this down so your input power doesn't go up. Now, if you're generating a lot of output and getting a real good uh, output from shorting this coil right here, okay, and uh, you can do that without slowing this down. If you got like plenty of power, actually you can have a little bit of drag and it's okay. It's 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 totally okay. Just as long as you don't have enough you're not dragging it down enough to where the input power goes way uh, it goes too high. You don't want that to where it goes too high and the output goes too low. Then you're back at an even uh, input and output and then your output drops. If this is too much drag then your output drops because the speed of this determines your output power uh, and if it's dragged down too much your output power will go down and your input power will go up and then it'll it'll even out to unity and then it'll drop to under unity and uh, that's not what we want to do now <clears throat> resonance has a lot to do with it and I'm gonna go back you know, to the analogy of the swing in the park. <clears throat> I know that's probably overplayed, but it's very important in that if you're starting to push somebody on a swing, okay, let's say this is the swing, and you're, you're like pushing somebody, it takes a lot of power at first to get this swing swinging up. And so the swing won't be swinging at its highest uh, point. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> but eventually, when the swing starts swinging up to its highest height, which is similar to its natural resonant frequency, everything has a, a natural resonant frequency. Everything does. Um, I'm not going to get into exactly what that is, I mean, that's pr it's pretty much everything. The cycles of the earth, the days and the months and the years and so forth. It all runs on a cycle. And that cycle is a frequency, a period of time. Okay, so once this reaches its natural, you know, highest speed or at highest swing, then the power put into it to keep that energy up in that swing becomes very small and so now it just takes small amounts of power to keep that energy up in the uh, in the swing same thing with the rotor 
it takes a very small amount of power to keep the high energy up in our mechanical energy uh, so that's why resonance is important <clears throat> now I should probably maybe uh, brush a little bit on what the lens's law is the lens's law is let's say this is a north pole okay and let's say it's coming into the coil like this the generator so that generates let's say a negative voltage and then as it moves away it creates a positive like that and alternates and so it does that back and forth alternates current say from negative the positive negative the positive it moves into it creates a negative moves away from it creates a positive well the lenses law is <clears throat> when you draw current from that voltage it sets up its own magnetic field to where if this is a north pole and it's coming in and generating and you pull current off that generated power it's going to create a north pole to push this north pole away so it makes it harder to come in so that's what slows it down as it leaves and alternates then the magnetic field that that's being uh, generated and when you draw current it's going to create a south pole around your your wire and it's going to try to drag it back like that so it's just the it's dragging it all the way through <clears throat> it's trying to push it away here it slows it down and then it's trying to drag it back which slows it down even further so that's the loading of the rotor <clears throat> Uh, that's the feedback mechanism that we want to avoid and so once we drag that down then of course your power going going in goes up because you're stalling this and then of course if this slows down and like I already mentioned the speed determines how much you're generating in power and if this slows down then your generated power goes down and so that's why <coughs> You know, somebody might come up with the idea of, oh, well, you know, I'm going to run a motor that's spinning a generator, and then I'm going to take the output of that generator and feed it back to the uh, input and feed the motor that's running the generator, that's running the motor, that's running the generator, that's running the motor, uh, and try to loop it so it runs itself. Well, no, you, you can't do that because of the Lenz's Law drag. So... <coughs> So the whole idea is to get this output power as high as po possible and the input power down as much as possible. And that's when it's in the state of resonance. And so if we're talking about a swing, okay, the idea then is to pull power or kinetic energy from the swing, take energy from the swing. So if we were to do that normally, the swing would like, you know, say the swing hits something so we can power it, it's going to slow the swing down. So we have to put more power into it to get the swing back up. And so, no, there is no over unity in resonance by itself. <clears throat> so the idea is to take energy off the swing without actually slowing the swing down. Now, this isn't so easy to do with a mechanical swing. But we can do it much easier with a uh, mechanical, electrical uh, setup like this. Um, so, the Lenz's Law is the overunity killer. And if we can bypass that Lenz's Law, then you know we can keep our overunity. Uh, I would also like to say, the overunity shows up in the voltage alone. If you don't draw any current from this generator coil, okay, and it's just sitting there, this is spinning past it, and this is going to generate like a very high voltage, and then it won't affect this if you don't load that down and pull current, from, try to pull current from it, and it's just generating a voltage. This this won't feel anything at all. It's only until you draw current. And that's the whole idea of this. And that's the whole idea of this AC uh, shorting circuit. To short this out. And I've already explained that in a previous video. 
And so, uh, <laughs> this is why that you can just take the normal generated power uh, and measure it and see that it is indeed more power than what is going into it, but it's going to drag the rotor down if you're just trying to pull current like a nor normal generator. You just try to pull current off of it normally. It's going to drag this down, so at first you'll see it as more power, but then the Lenz's Law opposing fields from drawing current will eventually catch up to this and load that down, and once that gets loaded down, then you'll see your generator power drop and your input power go up. And so it may start out way up here as over unity, but then eventually it goes down, your output drops, and your input rises, and then it becomes unity, and then it goes under unity. All because of the Lenz's Law of Drag. So once you get rid of that, that drag completely or even a little bit all you have to do is get rid of it a little bit to where you don't make your power go way up high and drop your output way low as long as you can keep it up here and this below and your output up higher than your input and do that continuously without dragging this down and continuously keep your output up then you can have a continuous uh, over unity output power. Um, so I, I hope that explains it a little bit better. And then of course, when you first start it up, like, like I said, it's going to use a lot of power. And you won't see over unity. Okay, it's only until it's got up the power and stored all the energy from the power source and stored it in here uh, that you're going to be able to see, uh, you know, in the resonance. It has to be in resonance before you can see the over unity. And if we're, if we're uh, avoiding the drag from, uh, from pulling current off of this so we can see our over unity, then we can keep that up higher. I hope that makes sense. Uh, because that's that's the whole reason why Lenz's Law is the over-unity killer. You bypass Lenz's Law, you can keep your over-unity and uh, not go under-unity. Just as long as we don't drag this down to make the power feeding into it go up and the output go down. We want to keep that up. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything in that explanation? Um, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, you want to keep that in resonance, and it's going to use a lot of power at first. That's why I don't make measurements. You know, if I did, you'd measure under unity. <coughs> and, uh, of course. But eventually, once this becomes high enough, okay, then if it stays that way, and we can keep that, Without dragging this down, eventually it can replace the power we used up on startup. <clears throat> now, what we can do is we can charge a capacitor once from a dead start from another capacitor if we wanted. It would have to be a little bit bigger, uh, like let's say like this, like a super capacitor. We can run it off that, or two or three. Uh, in parallel or series to try to make it more like a battery and we'll see we'll use a lot of power and it's it's not going to be enough that, you know this will charge up but this will be less power than what came out of our power source but if you take this out like this and put another one in starting from zero charge that up we can do that several times and get lots of capacitors charged up so eventually, by keeping the output up here and not dragging this down from opposing fields, if we do that enough times, we can see that if we add all that power up, because we're now you know, measuring it or storing it up from resonance several times, you'll see we eventually have more power than what came from the source, even from a complete standstill starting up from from a 
zero RPMs, you'll see we'll eventually recover what we lost. But we have to keep this output power up by not dragging this down and keeping the input power down. <clears throat> so that's uh, resonance. You need the resonance. Once you have resonance and you're avoiding the drag here, then Linz's law can't kill the overunity anymore. But it takes time. you got to get the energy up stored in here. It's, it's not like a 555 timer right here where you can turn it on and you're automatically right there at a high frequency. <coughs> but we need the magnets to do our generating. And so uh, it takes time to get that up to the frequency we need. Resonance. Keep the overunity. Charge several of these. Eventually we are putting out more than what it takes from getting this started up and getting it in the resonance. So I hope that makes sense <coughs> um, on the explanation as to why Linz's Law is the overunity killer. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and I will see you on the next video.